wonderful and beautiful friends. Today we are going to do a little bit of abstract art. As you can tell, I love abstract art. Look behind me. The mural I painted is full of shapes and colors that make me feel awesome and positive. So we're going to do a little practice. And the cool thing about abstract art is there's not really a wrong answer. If you think about using your intuition and kind of following your heart to figure out what you can use to express yourself, abstract art is the way to go. First, I want to tell you how you can be resourceful to actually make some paints. If you don't have paints at your house right now and you want to try making some paint, there's some sneaky ways that you can do it. The first one is if you have any dried out markers that you're not using because they just don't work, all you need to do is take the cap off, find a little container of water and just set the marker in a little bit of water and the ink that's still left is going to start soaking into the water. So you can do a little science experiment and see how long it takes you before your ink from your marker starts to fill up the container. We already see there's a little bit of green happening in there. So you can make some liquid watercolors if you want to try that. If you do have access some to, to some paint and you want to just water it down a little bit, then that's going to be awesome to make it last a little bit longer and also be more fluid kind of like watercolor. So don't be afraid to experiment a little bit, but of course ask somebody at home first to make sure it's okay that you use the tools um, to do something like this. You can also use if you have watercolors that are sort of empty, if you take the little pan of the watercolor and pop out some of those colors and set those inside a little bit of water too, you can make liquid watercolors that are going to last way longer than something where you have to just use paint and a tiny bit of water. So don't be afraid to experiment and try something new. Look how green that is already. And maybe I can use that for a wash in the background of my artwork. So first, think about the tools that you're going to collect. Remember, for abstract art, you can use anything. I'm going to be using the paint and the tools that I use for my work, but of course, collect what's close to you. Maybe you can find some cool collage pieces, some old newspapers, maybe find a pencil you weren't using, um, and use anything that's around you to create a piece of abstract art that's special to you. So I almost forgot, we need to do our mantra. Remember, our mantra makes us strong and ready to create art. So don't forget the motions. Here we go. My mantra, I am positive, I am creative, I am mindful, I am amazing, I am an artist. As you can tell, I absolutely love making abstract art. I love the therapeutic kind of feeling of picking my favorite colors, picking things that are sort of standing out to me and just sort of playing. This is my favorite kind of art to make. And today I'm gonna to show you how you can start by just practicing with some simple shapes, some collage, some scribbles and make your own kind of abstract art. So let's get started. First, all you need is a piece of paper. And remember, you can be resourceful with what you use around you. I'm using a piece of watercolor paper but of course you can pick anything that you have access to. Now, the paints that I'm going to use are actually interior house paint because I have really bright colors that I've been saving for a while. But again, pick any kind of color or thing that's around you that you can use. If you have the watercolor that you've been making, you can start using that. If you have some different paints that you've been collecting, you can use those. And if you have any other extra tools, like maybe some glitter or some glue or some other things you can use to start making some surfaces by practicing some shapes. So the first thing I'm going to do is to collect my colors of my paint and then I'm going to start making some sort of organic shapes. Most of the shapes that I make are kind of free form, a little bit scribbly, maybe start with some scratching or some sort of scribbles with these cool watercolor crayons, add a little bit of water and I just lay out maybe two or three main shapes of some colors that are kind of connecting to me that day. So I'm going to start with that. You might want to let your first layers of paint dry before you go in and work it with a little bit more detail, otherwise it's actually kind of fun sometimes to go ahead and draw over the top even when stuff is still wet. So now I'm going to see what happens, oh I've got this cool kind of like pull through some of my paint on this one, I'm going to see what happens if I draw in some of it while it's still wet, then up here I'm going to do sort of a watercolor crayon scribble overlap. I just love watching colors overlap over each other and see what happens when they play. So when I am adding some different details, don't be afraid to just try something because abstraction is really a way of adding therapy to your life and making sure you've got some time to sort of just see what happens and take a brain break from what's going on around you. So there's a fun practice in 
making abstract art because there's not really any rules. So I'm gonna finish that little curve. I kind of love the way that goes around the outside. Then I'm gonna try some of my watercolor that I made. It might be pretty light. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a circle over here. Some little light green splotches. Ooh, that's interesting. Sort of mixed with that turquoise a little bit and see what happens. So I'm gonna let that have a little time over there to get sort of dry and then I might come back and add just a little bit more. So once you've added some things like crayon or um, watercolor or the water paint that you made, any other layers on top can take a moment to just dry and then we're going to add some finishing touches. The last things that I love to add to my paintings are black ink for some kind of mark making details, some collage or some little papers, and then some gold because I love the way that that shines. Now if you don't have all of those things, remember you can totally find any sort of embellishments around you that you could use. Maybe you're going to find um, some little scraps of paper. Maybe you're going to find some little tiny beads that you can add to your painting. Really you can add whatever you'd like because it is a representation of your abstract thought. So I'm going to finish with a few little details details. First I'm going to do my black ink so just kind of get my brush with a little bit of black and find a space that I'd like to fill it in. I kind of feel like I want to see what happens over here if I give it a little bit of a wiggle, maybe some lines again, and give it some sort of confetti shapes. I don't love the way that this is turning out so I'm going to go over the top boop, and see what happens. It's a fun little detail so make it like a little collection of black. You can also do things like splatter paint by just holding your brush and doing a little bit of extra tapping. Let me get a little more water on there. Okay and you can splatter. I call that pepper because it kind of looks like I peppered my painting. You can also do things like adding collage. So the collage is basically just decorated paper that you can create and pick a different kind of shape that you'd like to add to your collage to make it just a little bit more interesting. I think it adds a little bit of depth and something to kind of make stand out on your picture. So I'm gonna finish adding my collage elements, my gold, and then see if I can totally finish up my piece. Once you've made an awesome piece of abstract art, the last thing you need to do is sign it. So I'm using the tiniest pen ever, and I just write my initials so itty bitty in the corner so that I can know that my abstract art is an expression of me. Don't forget, whenever you're making abstract art, the best thing is that there's not a wrong way to do it. So simply practice a few shapes, pick some colors, pick some tools, materials, things that are around you that you can start layering on top of each other and just see what happens. That's the magic of art. So as soon as you're done with your abstraction, remember you can make a few and then decide which one's your favorite or make a big gallery of them all. There's really no wrong way to do it. Now we're going to end today again by practicing a little bit of mindful calm so we can be focused and ready for the rest of our day. So what I wanted to do was ask you actually kind of a strange question. Here it is. Can you feel your brain? It's kind of a weird one. I can't feel my brain, but what I can think about are the thoughts and the things that are happening around me. So instead of focusing on what you can feel in your brain with actual feelings, think about the thoughts and the way that you control the way you behave. So what I want you to do is close your eyes for just a second and really focus on taking your deep breath. So first we're gonna breathe in. Remember, if you wanna hold your hand on your chest and your hand on your belly, your goal is to have your shoulders staying still and just your belly moving in and out. So breathe in. Breathe out, it takes practice for me too. I want you to focus on your thoughts, focus on your body, focus on your decisions, and focus on your attitude. Focus on how your brain is inside your head and what your brain controls in your body. Think about how your attitude changes how your brain goes about its business. Make your attitude a great one so you can practice kindness for others. Remember, you are amazing, you are strong, you are resilient, and I love you. Keep creating, friends.